Okay, this is the first tutorial I'm making in the series and specifically for anybody who doesn't know music or coding, I would really love your honest feedback. So if you watch the video and if you try to do the homework that I've given you and you're finding it difficult or something, please get in touch. Please let me know if you have any questions and um, the syntax error video I'm going to be putting out shortly. So uh, expect that to drop soon as well. Okay guys, welcome to this first tutorial in a series of tutorials on SonicPy that I'm going to be doing, which will be, which will be leading up to my album release in December. And it's going to be uh, just uh, to let you know, I'm going to be releasing a album, mini album or an EP, whatever, however you want to refer, refer to it on the 21st of December, which is the winter solstice. The EP is called Love Sick. Uh, the subtitle is For a Strong Woman. So it's Love Sick for a Strong Woman. And um, I'm really excited to be releasing this. And just as a lead up, I'm going to be putting out these, these tutorials. So, uh, for, and also uh, before I forget, at the end of the video, I'm going to be giving, um, at the end of all these videos, I'm going to be giving a music recommendation and it's not like music that I like. It'll be music that kind of helps in your compositional process. You know, it'll help you think about production and stuff like that. Okay, so let's get into this. Now, first, before we continue uh, with the tutorial, the first thing you need to do is if you haven't downloaded Sonic Pi, you need to go to sonic-pi.net and download the program. The program is free to download and it's available on Windows, Mac and uh, Linux. This is for a Linux based uh, system, but uh, you don't have to pay a damn thing for this. You just have to download it. Um, so once you've downloaded it, you can open it up and I'm just going to help you just going to quickly go over the interface before uh, we jump into the coding part of this. So here you'll see there's a run button a stop button, a record button, save and load. These are three very important buttons here. And over here, what the first thing I want you to do is you're going to click preferences and you got to make sure a couple of things. Okay. So in your audio, make sure your master volume is about half. This is set to save mode. Input output. Don't worry about this. This is only if you're using MIDI, which I won't get into. Now for the editor, just make sure all these are checked show line numbers show log show buttons all this make sure it's all tagged like this this is a interesting one here because you can have uh you can change how the interface looks so if you choose light it becomes like this dark looks like this then there's pro light pro dark so you'll see how the buttons kind of change now the buttons over here in the top kind of look a little cooler. I actually use Pro Dark because this is my favorite interface. Because once you start getting used to it, then you can just use it like this. But I'm just going to stick to dark here just for uh, simplicity's sake. And there's also visuals. Visuals is a bit fun in the sense that if you, this is mainly for live performances. Like if you have something, a video playing in the background, you can have that with the interface on top. So that if you're sort of you know, running code like that. So if you're performing, you can have a video playing in the background, plus you can manipulate the code on top. But for this, we're going to keep it at full opaque, okay? And show scopes, mirror stereo. So just make sure all, however this is set up, just make sure yours is set up the same way. Then you can switch off the preferences. The scope is essentially this little fellow here that shows you a little sound wave. So when you play something, So that shows over there. What I'm doing here, you can't see me do it, but I'm actually hitting the run button. Run is Alt R. So if I hit this, it'll do that. And stop to stop it running essentially, but oh, I'll get into more of that later. But you keep your scope on. Now, another important thing that you're going to be using regularly, at least for this initial part, is going to be the help. Now here you have a whole set of... Uh, it's basically like your glossary and your index and all your information if you want to look up anything. So I actually would look these tutorials up when I was teaching myself on the first go. And um, 
here you have tutorials for basically everything. Um, but I won't be going into this deep. This is generally for your reference. If you get stuck on anything, you can look up these tutorials. You have example codes here. So for instance, if I take Magician Acid, these are just bits of code that if you copy, I copy it and I paste it into a buffer and run it, it'll give me an output of what someone has created. And it's just copy paste. This is the, this is why you know coding music is so fun because all your sessions are just essentially text. So um, then we have synths. I won't be going into this now. I'll be going into this a little later. But all the information about every synth of native to Sonic Pi is here as well. Same with effects samples also here now this is something we'll be going through today because today we're going to be making some beats so this is your full library of samples that's native to the program and these include drum samples music samples but again i'll be going into this a little later and then last but not least is language which is basically all the little bits of syntax that you use are all explained here like for instance this little bit of sleep over here if you go down and search for sleep there will be information about sleep wait for the number of beats before triggering the next command okay so things like that but this is basically for your reference if ever you get stuck you just have to go to help and all the information is available in help but for now i'm going to switch this off i'm going to select all the text in this buffer delete it and now we're just going to jump into the tutorial okay now first what is coding? Now, this tutorial is for anybody. So if you have never done coding in your life, I'm going to just briefly explain what coding is exactly. So the way coding works is um, every coding language that's there, whether it's C++ or Java or whatever, they all have syntax. They all have like these little bits of language elements to it. And what you're basically doing is you are typing a set of instructions into this buffer, this is what is called a buffer. You see the zero, one, two, three, these are called buffers. So in this buffer, you, you type, you're typing a set of instructions and you're telling the program to do something so that it gives a certain output. That is basically what it is. And it's also why in all these old timey films, the way they would show computers is as if you're talking to it, because you are kind of you are giving a set of instructions to the computer. For instance, I'll just show you some examples. I have some queued up here. Um, so this is one from Alien where he's he's asking mother, you'll see you if you. He's saying, what's the story, mother? Which sounds so funny. It's like, who talks to a computer like that? But that's actually how computing works. You are actually giving the computer a set of instructions but with a specific syntax. In this case, the syntax is just normal English. But and it's the same in this one of my favorite films, The Fly. Of course, he does the same thing. The way he talks to the computer. Just look at this. So this is not far from the truth in the way computers work. You are telling it, ask telling it a certain set of instructions to give yourself a certain output. But the way it actually works is it's not this. Now this seems like kind of silly almost. And for those of you who haven't seen The Fly, you need to watch this movie. This movie and uh, another movie called Candyman, they're the only two movies I know which managed to fuse horror and romance really well. Like... I would say the fly is as good as the notebook, <laughs> in, in my opinion. Anyway, let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so now this thing about syntax. So the first bit of syntax, what we're going to learn today is basically elements of rhythm. So the first bit of syntax we're going to learn is um, use BP. Okay. Now, BPM, for those of you who don't know, means beats per minute. And if you don't specify the BPM in Sonic Pi, uh, it'll default to 60. And 60 beats per minute means one beat is one second. 
So, but in this case, we're going to make it 120 because just to make it, but it's an instruction. It's like I'm telling the program use uh, 120 as the beats per minute. So use BPM 120. And then the next bit of syntax we're going to learn is sample. Now, what is sample exactly? Sample means you want to use a certain sound clip. So in this case, like when we went to help, there's samples over here. There's all these different, different sounds. So snare drums are there, percussive sounds, miscellaneous sounds. So for this, for this tutorial, the first thing we're going to learn about, the well, first thing we're going to sample is a bass drum. Now, for those of you who don't know the, what a bass drum is, see now if I say sample, BD is for bass drum, but there are all these different types of bass drums, but the one I'm going to select is BD House because it's my favorite. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know what a bass drum is, I have a clip lined up for you. This is uh, over here. This is what is called a bass drum. This over here is a snare drum. So we're going to basically, for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using bass drum, snare drum. I'm going to ignore all these other stuff and if you haven't seen this video you need to watch it anyway back to the tutorial now we've got a bass drum here. so i'm saying use this as your bpm and then i'm saying sample bd and then if i hit run let's listen to what that sounds like so that's all it's doing it's there's no kind of, it's not looping, so you can't really hear the beats per minute, but it's basically sampling a bass drum. That's the instruction I've told Sonic Prime. Now, the next thing I want to sample is a snare drum. I mentioned the snare drum. So there's SN for snare drum, and we're going to just use the dub. Okay, so now what happens if I run this? So what it's doing is it's playing these two things simultaneously. Now, one thing you have to understand about coding is the way the program reads your lines of code is it'll read it from top to bottom. So how you order your instructions is very important. So in this instance, it's playing these two samples, but it's playing them simultaneously. But I want to play the, I wanted to play the samples one after the other, uh, one after the other. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to sleep after first it'll sample the bass drum. Then I say sleep for one beat and then it'll sample the snare drum. Okay, So let's see what that sounds like. See, so it's, it'll sample the bass drum, sleeps one for one beat and then it samples the snare drum. Now what happens if I just copy and paste this? Copy, paste. And then I put one more sleep here because I want it to alternate between the two beds. So it'll be this, sleep one, sample this, then the program will sleep for another beat, then it'll sample this. So let's see what it sounds like. So it goes, so actually let's copy this and paste it. Maybe two more times. So let's see what this sounds like. So there we have it playing a bass drum, a kick drum. This is like a disco beat, your standard sort of disco beat. And if you look, this code looks a bit cumbersome. So there's a way of sort of simplifying this idea. So I want these two elements to sort of repeat four times, right? So instead of copy pasting it four times, what I can do is I can tell the program four times, sorry. So now this is another thing. See, instead of the dot, I'd put a comma. And man, this is another thing. So you're going to run into a lot of syntax syntax errors when you're doing programming. And this is going to be the biggest um, hurdle to picking up any language because the syntax errors are essentially like the equivalent of when you're trying to play a guitar or learn an instrument and your hand starts cramping up, you know, because it's like you can't get the finger positions or whatever. So syntax errors are the the sort of thing that really um, will you have to overcome to really pick up any any computing language or anything. Yeah, any computing language. So now what I'm doing is I'm saying four times do. And I have to also, with every do, you have to have an end. So I'm saying four times do, and then it'll do this set of instructions four times. But only the set of instructions between the do and block. That is what is important. So now if I play this,
So it plays it four times. Simple enough, okay? But now what happens if I want to loop these things? You know, I want it to go into, what do you call it? Just keep going and then maybe change it along the way. So now what we're going to create is we're going to create a live loop, okay? Now this is probably one of the most important things you're going to learn is in terms of syntax. So create live loop. And now with live loops, you can name them anything you want. Like I remember we had done one workshop with like a bunch of like 12 year olds and stuff. And this one girl had named her her live loop some salted caramel, something, some favorite ice cream of hers because we told her you can name it whatever you want. So she named it that. I'm just going to name it um, booty for now. On. So I'm saying live loop booty do. And it'll just keep rolling now. So this just will go into infinity until I tell the program to stop. Because I've said run, but now I'll just say stop. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to create one more live loop. This one I'm going to call. Thumpy. Because now what I want to do is I want to take this kick drum and I want to put it in this uh, other loop here. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm just going to keep this here. And I'm going to label this back beat. Now, why am I labeling it, labeling it back beat? I will make clear a little later on. But one thing you just have to understand about back beat is the back beat is essentially the anchor for your rhythm. Okay. So here I'm going to say sample bd house sleep one end and then I'm going to run this and see what it sounds like. So here's another thing. If you create two live loops, what Sonic Pi does is they'll start both the live loops simultaneously. So it's like having two tracks sort of running simultaneously, you know. And whatever instructions are within each live loop, it'll be performing those set of instructions. So here we now have a basic disco beat, right? This is basically every disco beat is this four to the floor, what's called. Okay, so now what I want to explain to you is the first rule of sleep and the first rule of sleep is this okay if for whatever sleep value you're using you should always use values that are multiples of 0.25 now what this means is you can use a sleep value of you can use any whole number essentially so one two three four five it doesn't matter what the whole number is you can use any whole number but if you're using a number in between say one and two, it has to be the, or say less than one, it has to be the 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0.75. And if you know your decimals, you'll know this is one quarter, half, and three quarters. That's it. Okay. So if you're using a number between, uh, say, two and three, you, you could use 2.25, or you could use 2.5. Or 2.75. And say similarly, if you're using between like 5 and 6 or something, it would be 5.25, 5.5, and 5.75. Um, why this is now, if you stick to this rule that you always use values that are multiples of 2.5, you will be in um, in musical terms, you will be within a time signature of what is called four by four. Now, one thing you have to understand about this time signature is that about 99% of the music you listen to is in this 4x4 four four time signature. Now, if you think about it mathematically, there could be so many different time signatures you could do, maybe 7x8, 12x6, I don't know, so many different. But for some reason, 4x4 four four is just a standard across a lot of music. And I honestly don't know why, because I'm not like a musicologist, I'm, maybe somebody does know, but I don't know. And I've looked it up. I haven't really found out why. But um, you basically want to stick to this time signature. And if you use sleep times that are multiples of 0.25, you will always be in this time signature. Now, 
what does that mean so i'm going to show you now exactly okay so we've got a backbeat rolling in this one now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy and paste um sorry my mouse is acting funny uh, we're just going to copy and paste this okay so paste 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 and just to 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 illustrate this example so i've got one two three four five six seven seven okay fine i'm choosing seven because seven is like a bit of a weird number so i'm just gonna select values for sleep that are all multiples of four but i'm just gonna pick them randomly okay so let's say 0.25 here let's say 0.75 here we keep this as one let's keep this as 0.15 let's keep this as i don't know 2.25 Keep this as I don't know. Let's keep this as another point five, and then maybe here another point seven five. Okay, and now let's listen to what this sounds. Okay, I'm just gonna run this. Let's see. So it's like some kind of like funky beat right now. But if you see that because I've used all these values, the beat sounds fine. If I was using something like point. Three or something, it would sound really odd. Like, let's let's try. It. Let me just. It sounds. It'll start sounding a bit chaotic. Now. So don't want it. So don't want it. Okay. And the thing that I was saying before with the backbeat anchoring the song. So for instance, if I just deleted this and I just played the the kick drums, we just ran the kick drums. You can tell there's a sort of pattern to it, but it's not something that you can rhythmically sort of sync up to. So what my point about the backbeat is the backbeat will anchor your uh, overall beat. So you can really go crazy with this stuff as long as you have a, a normal backbeat in the background, because it's kind of like the beats over here will sort of rotate around the backbeat, you could say. Okay, so now other things we can do just for fun. Let's say I showed you that thing about four times do, right? So let's see if we do, we can do like five times do, and then ten. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so let me run this, see what it sounds like. You can do the same for some other element here. Say three times do, and Instead of putting it just around this, we put it on these two. So, and it has to be said for these initial tutorials, your stuff is going to sound a bit dinky. So you're just going to have to deal with the dinkiness. But um, as we get along the series, I'll show you how to make it sound a little more music -y, let's say okay okay so now as you can see i've stuck to that first rule of sleep in the sense that all values are multiples of 0.25 um, you can randomly repeat and the thing is i have no, had no objective in what i want to what the output should be i'm just kind of using these rules and trying to make music you know i'm, I'm i just want something to dance to essentially okay so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make one more live loop and this time you're going to include and i'm going to call it music okay and i want to sample now a musical element okay so now if you go to your help there are a whole bunch of music samples as well like bass sounds okay so like we have Bass hit C, bass hard C, bass thick C, bass drop C, all this stuff. So let's take one of the bass. bass. Let's do drop C. And then let's say sleep eight, just to follow that second rule of sleep. And let's see what this sounds like. Okay. Now, let's get to the homework. So this tutorial is actually pretty much over in the sense that 
I'm now like, if you saw my tutorial, I mean, if you saw my video about lyrics, you'll know that I'm a big fan of this book called The Old Less Traveled. And one of the reasons I like that book is because he gives exercise at the end of every chapter. So in that spirit, I'm giving you some homework, okay? So what I want you to do is, in this thumping, okay, just pick any any samples, like any of these bass drum samples, and just replace it with something else. But replace it with something else that um, from this library. Because um, one of the most important things as whether you're a musician or even a sound designer or a sound editor, is that you have to know your library of sounds. So just go through all these sounds. One of my favorite ones are these electric sounds over here. So we'll just replace some of these with electric sounds. So if I type in E, L, E, yeah, we, we put one electric chime over here. Uh, we can replace this one with maybe, there's some mis miscellaneous sounds. I know there's a crow in here somewhere. Yeah, miscellaneous crow. So let's put a crow, we put one crow. Uh, over here, let's put a crow. Uh, yeah, let's put a crow. And let's see what that sounds like. And then over here, I want to, I want you to add like at least maybe another kind of music sample let's say so there's were uh, there's some ambient music samples so we put one ambi piano and instead of having a sleep time let's have it let's have one bass play simultaneously with it so there's bass let's do bass dnbf yeah let's do that and then we say sleep eight let's see what this sounds like So this is like some really random beat, but you get the picture, I'm hoping, in the sense that it's just a set of samples with sleep times in between them. And that kind of determines the rhythm of um, everything that you're producing and how these things kind of interact with each other gives you the full piece, you know. So play with the samples, play with the sleep times. And if you want, you add one more live loop. That's optional if you want. You can add one more live loop and add more drum elements or whatever samples you want. And um, and then we'll go into the next tutorial, which I'll be covering some more concepts. Now, to finish off, I thought I would recommend um, some listening also, just if you're interested. And the album... I'm going to recommend is actually one of probably the most uh, one of the if you're into rock music this is like a very 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 important album like I'll just list out a bunch of bands that have been influenced by this album okay it's Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana, Radiohead, Rage Against the Machine, REM, Nine Inch Nails, LCD Sound System that's James Murphy's band Franz Ferdinand, Block Party, St. Vincent. So if you're into rock music and if you want to make rock music, you have to listen to this one album. And that album is Entertainment by Gang of Four. Now, this album came out in 1979, which if you listen to it, I know you will be shocked. But every musician, this is like one of those musicians, musicians albums. And one really sad thing is the guitarist for this band, Andy Gill, he died this year in Feb. And I, I'm i not sure if he died of Corona or not, but some people suspect it was Corona. Um, uh, but in the, any case, this album is so, I cannot uh, even begin to explain how important this album is. And if you listen to it, at least if you're a musician, I think you will understand why this album is so seminal. It's because you have so many different types of rock bands, but this band has is this weird blend of like funk, rock, pop, dub, disco. It's like all these things mashed into one. Plus they have these sort of leftist lyrics, like these Marxist sort of lyrics that they talk about. And um, it's just an amazing album. I can't even stress how, how, how awesome this album is. So please give this album a listen, Entertainment by Gang of Four. And um, I will see you in the next one.